Good evening, Americans, and welcome to the Ed Show tonight. Mitt Romney, I mean, this dude can't take the heat. 37 hours after he said he isn't concerned about the very poor, Mitt Romney's doing a flip-flop again. I'm not going to let him off the hook. This is the Ed Show. Let's get to work. The highest form of charity is to do our part to help others stand on their own. The president continues to run circles around Republicans, while the guy who likes to fire people gets an endorsement from a guy who fires people on TV. It's my honor, real honor, and privilege to endorse Mitt Romney. We'll have all the fallout from today's circus with Ezra Klein, Sam Stein, Michael Eric Dyson, and Caroline Heldman. The radical Republican attack on workers in Arizona continues. Now there's a Scott Walker connection, and there might be a recall movement brewing in the desert. And the backlash against the Susan G. Komen Foundation is exploding. Your Facebook page has people cutting with pink ribbons in half. The responses we're getting are very, very favorable. The president of the National Organization for Women is outraged, and she is here tonight. Good to have you with us tonight, folks. Thanks for watching. The contrast between President Obama and Mitt Romney couldn't be more stark. Their differences were on display while they were thousands of miles apart from each other. This morning, President Obama joined members of Congress for the National Prayer Breakfast in Washington. He spoke about the message of shared sacrifice and how it's rooted in his Christian faith. When I talk about shared responsibility, because I genuinely believe that in a time when many folks are struggling, in a time when we have enormous deficits, if I'm willing to give something up as somebody who's been extraordinarily blessed, and give up some of the tax breaks that I enjoy, I actually think that's going to make economic sense. But for me as a Christian, it also coincides with Jesus' teaching that for unto whom much is given... Much shall be required. The president also spoke about something we've heard a lot about in the last 24 hours, the poor. It's also about the biblical call to care for the least of these, for the poor, for those at the margins of our society. And for others, it may reflect the Jewish belief that the highest form of charity is to do our part to help others stand on their own, living by the principle that we are our brother's keeper caring for the poor and those in need. This sets up a clear comparison with the man who was hoping to be the Republican nominee for president. I'm in this race because I care about Americans. I'm not concerned about the very poor. We have a safety net there. If it needs a repair, I'll fix it. I'm not concerned about the very rich. They're doing just fine. I'm concerned about the very heart of America, the, the 90, 95 percent of Americans who right now are struggling and I'll continue to take that message across the nation. It's not the first time this week President Obama drew a big distinction between himself and Mitt Romney. Yesterday, the president spoke about home foreclosures, saying it's wrong for anyone to suggest that we should let the housing market bottom out. Although it was Mitt Romney who told a Nevada newspaper to let the foreclosure process run its course. On Tuesday, President Obama toured the Washington Auto Show. Mitt Romney famously said, famously said, let Detroit go bankrupt. Now GM is back on top, and President Obama has a different message. It's good to remember that uh, the fact that there were some folks who were willing to let this industry die because of folks coming together. Uh, we are now back uh, back in a place where we can compete with any uh, car company in the world. The president is getting an early jump on the general election. He's letting voters know the clear lines between him and Mitt Romney. Romney is also showing America where he stands. He stood side by side with the all-American nobody Donald Trump today, the guy who fires people on TV, supporting the guy who likes to be able to fire people. It's my honor real honor and privilege to endorse Mitt Romney. Mitt is tough, he's smart, he's sharp. He's not going to allow bad things to continue to happen to this country that we all love. So, Governor Romney, go out and get him. You can do it. There are some things that you just can't imagine happening in your life. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs>
We just have to cherish the moment, don't we? President Obama's campaign team was thrilled with the endorsement. The campaign's Twitter feed posted video of Trump and Romney with a helpful note saying, in case you missed it. The timing couldn't be worse for the Romney campaign. Yesterday, Romney said he's not concerned about the very poor. Now he's endorsed by a guy who was concerned about one thing, and that's being very rich. And get this, the Washington Post reported 25%, a quarter of the money amassed by Romney's campaign and an allied super PAC has come from just 41 people, each of whom has given more than $100,000. Nearly a dozen of the donors have contributed $1 billion or more. The pro-Romney super PAC even got a $250,000 donation from a company with only a post office box for a headquarters and no known employees. Go figure, it's the Republican way. A very small number of very rich people are really making Mitt Romney the next nominee, don't you think? Romney is the candidate of the 1%. The Obama team knows what the guidelines are. Make sure the American people know what this is all about. Get your cell phones out. I want to know what you think. Tonight's question, which candidate is more concerned about the poor? Text A for President Obama, text B for Mitt Romney to 622-639. You can always go to our blog at ed.msnbc.com. We'll bring you the results later on in the show. I'm joined tonight by Michael Eric Dyson, MSNBC political analyst and Georgetown University professor, and Caroline Heldman, professor of politics at Occidental College. Welcome tonight, both of you. I appreciate you being here. Get this. Romney is walking back his comments about the poor this evening. He told a Nevada news program, we don't have the tape, but we got the Quote, it was a mistake. It was a misstatement. I misspoke, he said. I've said something that is similar to that, but quite acceptable for a long time. Now, here are some examples of what Romney has been saying for a long time. We ought to provide help to the people who've been hurt most by the Obama economy. And that's the middle class. Uh, it's not those at the very low end. It's not certainly not those at the very high end. I'm not worried about rich people. They're doing just fine. The very poor have a safety net. They're taken care of. In our country, the people who need the help most are not the poor who have a safety net, not the rich who are doing just fine, but the middle class. Michael Eric Dyson, I'll ask you first. Was yesterday a misstatement? Not at all. It is consistent with what he's been articulating throughout this entire process and over the years. He ignores the fact that the top 20% of American income earners own nearly own uh, earn 50% of the income. Those who are poor, about 15% of the population, earn less than 3.4%. Those at the bottom are in dire need of help. Yes, the middle class needs to be helped seriously, but those who are poor and working poor, and what we mean by working poor is that those who work 40 to 50 hours a week often two and three jobs, and they still can't make ends meet and can't rise above the poverty level. These people are not lazy. They're not disinclined to work. They can't find gainful uh, employment. And if this man wants to be president, and yet he's not concerned about a significant population uh, of people who are doing uh, poorly, then God bless those who would vote for him. But he is not the right man to fill in and deal with the situation that is of utter necessity for those who are poor. Well, this comment came about 37 hours ago, and he's in damage control right now, but after a plethora of media critique out there in the media, he decides to come out and say, well, I misspoke. Caroline, uh, the, the Romney damage control, is this going to work? I don't think it's going to work because he very clearly said the people who have been hurt the most are the middle class, the poor aren't hurting as much. And I don't think he understands what that means. If the poor were doing better, they would be middle class. Uh, this notion that, that he is demonizing the poor or saying that they're not doing very poorly doesn't take into account that one out of five of the poor are children. And the vast majority of the poor, as Dr. Dyson pointed out, are working poor. They're people who are working full time. They're disabled people. They're elderly people and their children. So when he's talking about the poor and demonizing them, even if he doesn't directly intend to, which I would argue he probably did, uh, it's not going to help him come the general election. I don't think this is something he can talk his way out of. There's a real big disconnect there for sure. Michael, what about Trump's endorsement today? Is this going to hurt the guy? I mean, if you look at some of the polling that's out there, a lot of people aren't going to be influenced by this and some negatively. Well, not immediately, but I think in the long run, the calculation here is that Donald Trump will go out there and... 
Mitt Romney to put him in good standing with those who are suspicious of the bona fides of uh, Mitt Romney. That he's a really conservative, and, and since Donald Trump has uh, you know drummed up all of this you know madness about he's the true conservative out here, then it might help with those who are on the fence. But I doubt that it's going to help with the mainstream yeah. of the Republican Party who understands that uh, Donald Trump is a joke and a sideshow. Professor Heldman, why would Mitt Romney go along with this Trump circus? I mean, Donald Trump really started this whole election year questioning whether President Obama was an American, questioning his birth certificate, then claiming victory that he got the president to put out the full long form. I mean, it, it, it's really been a dog and pony show. Why, why would Romney and his camp view this as such a big endorsement that th they would play it up the way they are playing it up? Well, I think it appeals to uh, racist Americans, those who uh, birthers, uh, those who question the president, and it allows Romney to align himself with someone who will play up with, with racist folks uh, who he doesn't necessarily have to directly use that language like Gingrich has been doing, right, saying that blacks don't have role models or he'll it, calling President Obama a food stamp president. I think it, it allows him to align himself with people who believe that without actually having those words come out of his mouth. Well, I wonder how many sound bites from his uh, prayer breakfast today are going to be played by the conservative media. They've accused him of not being a Christian. Uh, the president was very clear about his faith today. Does this serve the president well? Michael, what do you think? Well, yeah. I mean, every time he gets a chance to stand up uh, and take a swing at some of these uh, ill-informed, ignorant people who, who contend that he's not a Christian, he's been saying this forever, that he's a Christian. And it's not that other people, you know, Muslims, Jews, and whoever else are, are part of the American uh, religious landscape are not to be treated seriously. It's just the fact that he happens to be a Christian, and they're trying to call him everything but uh, literally a child of God. They celebrate Tim Tebow, who bows down on a field to pray to God, and yet here's a man who's trying to put into practice, based on biblical principles, some concern for the poor, and he's dismissed out of hand. I think probably our own moral values have to be examined, but I think this helps Obama in the long run to make that steady stream of consciousness that, hey, I'm a Christian, I'm rooted in the Bible, I'm doing what I think God wants me to do, and that's the best I can offer. And Caroline, you can't deny, I mean, I, I, was, I watched the whole thing this morning when it was happening, th there were clear political parallels here about what the president was saying and the stories of the week. What would you make of that? Well, I think he's very clearly responding to Romney and Gingrich, who've been demonizing the poor. Gingrich more than Romney, I would say, um, in talking about, you know, how uh, people, uh, poor children, and, and specifically children of color, uh, need to get a job and don't have role models, um, and his NAACP comment and food stamps. I think that the president is directly responding to that, and I think it's, it's a message that will resonate with Americans, 75 percent of whom want to see taxes, fairer taxes for the wealthy, and are not into this poor demonization. The fact, you know, when, when a couple million people can't get employment, it might be on them. But when 20 million Americans are underemployed or unemployed, it's a systemic issue. And I don't think that this demonization is going to work. Professor Michael Eric Dyson, Professor Caroline Heldman, great to have both of you with us tonight here on The Ed Show. Thanks so much.